Hey, Nick. Hello, Warwick. Hello, listeners. Hello, listeners. Guess what? What? That sounds like the start of a joke. It did sound like, like the start knock, of a knock. joke. Knock, knock. That might be as far as the joke goes today, Warwick, because under pressure, I have failed. Maybe, maybe you should have asked AI or chat GPT to give you a joke, Nick. I did ask AI to give me a joke, and then I asked them to tell me a better one, and then I asked them to tell me another, and then I went in and changed the prompt, and I'm still not getting anywhere today because it would <laughs> seem that AI does not think it is very funny. And that really is a segue into today's episode and today's guest, Donna McGeorge. Welcome back to the Tradies in Business podcast. Nick and Waltz, good to be here. Great to see pleasure, you again, Donna. Pleasure to have you here, Donna. Uh, more than two years since you were last on the podcast. Is it that long? Oh, my God. It just, just feels like only yesterday. I know. We only have that effect yesterday. on people, Donna. <laughs> just like old friends. Indeed. Now, Donna, we're going to chat to you today, not about 25-minute meetings or getting a day of your life back. Um, we're going to talk to you about, funnily enough, listeners, you'll be amazed to know that we're talking to Donna about AI. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Donna, you you graciously attempted to rescue us from our lack of dad joke from AI at the start, but it really did highlight some of the challenges with the technology. Um, and you had a very, well, funny for those people who have ever had a crack at <laughs> getting something out of chat GPT. Uh, what was what was the line you had? It's like. Oh, there's a, there's a couple. Um, so, again, you got to remember, it's a computer. It probably doesn't get humor the way us humans get humor. Um, but it's like, so, again, trying to be helpful. So, here I go, standing, sounding like a stand-up. You know, writing this book is a lot like having a conversation with ChatGPT, sometimes insightful, sometimes surprising, but I always it always ends up with me wondering if I just spend an hour talking to myself. Now, I know that's funny, but <laughs> if you don't know anything about ChatGPT or AI, you're that's like, there's nothing funny about that at all. So, Donna, you wrote a book. Well, actually, you, you've written a whole bunch of books, uh, but you wrote a book uh, 12 months ago, actually. Um, uh, yes, actually. It was released about this time 12 months ago. Yeah, about AI. Well, about chat GPT specifically, right? Yeah. And I reckon with the speed that things move in this space, <laughs> that I'm not surprised that you're having to redo the book. Yeah. Um, my publisher came to me about a month or so ago, or probably a little bit more than that, about six weeks ago, and said, uh, hey, we think there's room for you to do a second edition on this. Um, are you up for that? And I went, of course, I'm always up for something, I'm always up for a challenge. And they said, great, can you turn it around in three weeks? And oh. I'm like, I think, I think, you know, they're taking the mickey a little bit, I think. I think as they know, in case any of the listeners are wondering, um, that because I, I, I can use ChatGPT pretty well. So I can use ChatGPT to write about ChatGPT and bang around, you know, turn around or bang out a, a, a new edition fairly quickly. So the good news is I did do that and uh, we're expecting that to hit the shelves very late August, early September. 2024, as you listen Correct. to this, listeners. So if you're going through the back catalogue in 2097, uh, you've missed out. <laughs> Probably won't be. Any or maybe the, no, you're up to the tenth edition by then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> Donna, so, I guess is sorry, Warwick. If you yeah, started this twelve months ago, you wrote this book, which means it, there's quite some time to write it before then. You're quite an early adopter for this kind I, of. I tech. was. I was a bit of an early adopter. So, um, ChatGPT, you know, in terms of it being released to the general public, it had been around for a couple of years, but not available to just everyone. Mm -hmm. And so they announced that it was available uh, towards the end of 2022, about December 2022. And so I saw it and people had started already talking about it. This is the new, new thing. It's going to help with productivity. I thought, ah, uh, being that I'm into productivity, I better go check this thing out. And so during my holidays in January, I set aside a couple of hours and just uh, literally it said in my diary, check out ChatGPT. So, so I know this is kind of a was a long answer to a pretty short question. Mm. Um, and so uh, I started playing around with it and I went, oh, shit, this is awesome. And so then I rang my sister who does similar work to me and I said, 
get on the phone. And so we were on the phone, like we're on the phone. And then I said, get onto this chat GPT thing. So we're playing around with it together. She then goes to her people at work on the, you know, whatever day it was, she went back to work and says, hey, check out this chat GPT thing. And so they start mucking around. How'd you hear about this? Oh, my sister Donna. Um, then someone who knew someone whose brother's sister's cousin, twice removed sister-in-law's brother, <laughs> who's a journalist for one of the major newspapers, calls me out of the blue and says, hey, I hear you're an expert in chat GPT. Wow. <laughs> well, oh, I don't know about that. And he goes, well, you do an interview for us for the papers? And I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. And so the, the topic was five things you can do with chat GPT around the house. And so... I then went and asked ChatGPT, what are five things you can help me with around the house? <laughs> um, told the journal I'd done that. That ends up in the papers on the weekend. They even send out a photographer. It was all very fancy. And then on the Monday, I get a call from my publisher saying, hey, do you want to write a book? So the reason I'm telling you that is I wasn't an expert when I started writing the book. But wow. holy cow, I became one. Mm. And and. I, I kind of labor this point a little bit because if anyone's listening now that says, oh, I've got to know computers, I've got to know something, I've got to be a bit of an expert. No, you don't. You just mm. got to be willing to get in and have a crack. Mm. Um, it's not hard. Anyone, anyone can become an expert at this. Great point. And I, I love someone who can take a short question and give a real oh, long yeah, answer. Oh, yeah, I can't. I love it when people say, Donna, can I just ask a quick question? Sure, but I can't guarantee a quick answer. Because that's so my know. forte, Donna. So uh, I feel like you're my people. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great demonstration of just how um, versatile the tool can be if you know mm. how to use it properly, Donna. So the point I'm trying to get to here is, yes, none of us know how to use it properly when we start but we can learn how to use it. So can you talk to us a little bit about that learning cycle that goes with utilising AI? Because none of it's, it's somewhat intuitive, but not as intuitive as perhaps we would like it to be. As I demonstrated earlier, I went and asked it to write me a joke. It didn't necessarily hit the mark. I gave it some more prompts. Still didn't quite get where I wanted it to be, but that's the point, I think. It's, it's the continued prompts for change or for improvement on what you were originally looking for and the clarity around that that can impact the outcome. So it's like anything, the quality of your prompt determines the quality of your output. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we could have said to it, give me 10 jokes. Mm -hmm. And so one of the mistakes most people make when they first get into it is they go into it with a Google mindset. Yes. And so the Google mindset, we're used to going to Google, putting in something and then having a million odd, odd responses we have to go through. ChatGPT is literally like having a conversation with someone sitting right next to you. And so if you, it will be literal. And so if we'd said to it, give me 10 dad jokes about, so I don't know what your jokes normally are. I'm assuming they're a bit corny or cheesy or a bit dad jokey. Um, mm -hmm. But right. And so if we said, give me 10 dad jokes, um, that are similar to this. Here's one mm -hmm. I might have used earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, give it a little bit more information. So I think I think of ChatGPT like a like an eager intern or an eager apprentice or an eager assistant that's dying to do an awesome job, like so eager, uh, but sometimes has a hangover, uh, mm -hmm. so it doesn't quite hit the mark the way we'd like. <laughs> and so we have to check. We we have to kind of give it better instructions because yep. if we if we give it poor instructions it'll literally give us what we ask for so better instructions the better the prompts that's the correct language the better we the better we get with this mm. i think um with well new technologies i was going to say but this is really not that new it's been around for a whole bunch of years it's just become more well known i think and and perhaps more widely dabbled with in the last two or three years, but with anything like this that's perceived as new, I think there's a lot of uh, confusion and fear from people of, uh, around how it can be used and, and perhaps what some of the, the risks are. And then I see the flip side of that is everyone, not everyone, sorry, people start to use it for everything. It's like, oh, I'll use it to write my blog posts for my business and then I'll get it to do my social media posts and I'll have it write emails for me. And I'm starting to see content and copy uh out there in the world it's like oh he could have at least changed a couple of words from the chat gpt output mate like don't just copy and paste it um what's been some of the you know obviously since you your first uh, edition of the book came out donna there would have been a heck of a lot of change in the last 12 months 
what's some of the um, changes perhaps you've seen in the marketplace with the way people are using it? Um, it's so funny because I can spot a chat GPT written blog post, newsletter, comment, <laughs> whatever, a mile away. So mm. first of all, overuse of the word crucial. Uh, it's crucial. So if you see the word crucial, chances are chat GPT wrote it. And the other one is um, it often, and I even saw this on a Harvard article. I was like, come on, I expect more yeah. from Harvard Business Review. Um, so anything that starts with, in today's fast-paced world, <laughs> <laughs> right. So if you see in today's fast-paced world, it is crucial, then you know, absolutely know you've got a chat GPT on your hands. <laughs> so it is getting better. So I am um, in the past, it, it wouldn't remember who you are and what you've done and what you've written about over the course of several mm. chats. Like it was like a brand new chat, bit like Google, brand new search. It doesn't remember what you've searched for before, so it mm. doesn't enhance. So chat GPT was a bit like that. So if you started a new chat, it was a brand new chat, no memory. So the new version now is learning about how I type, how I, what I ask for, what are the things I've asked for in the past. So when we were playing around with the joke thing, I'd been talking to it about a potential blah, 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 podcast for myself. I'm thinking about starting a podcast and I'm mm -hmm. thinking about calling it Cucker and Catch Up. So I was asking it to help me write a bit of copy around what that might look like. So when it was answering me about the jokes, it was making reference to copying yeah. catch-up stuff. So it's much better at learning stuff now, which makes it a bit easier and shortcuts it. Um, but there's still, you know, it's still a long way off being able to, you know, just copy and paste straight across it. I say the best you can expect out of it is about 80% good enough. So I, I support, you know, people who's not, like if, if, you're, if your primary business and most of your listeners would fall into this category, not copywriters or mm. marketers or whatever they have to do, copywriting and marketing and sometimes write job descriptions and job ads and stuff like that, that's what you want to go use it for. Yep. Anytime you're sitting there thinking, I'm stuck or a blank page, I don't know where to start, boom, there's your buddy right there. Uh, so I'd say, yes, there's a lot to be nervous about because it's new and it's different and we don't know how the stuff is used or maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, I can remember, I'm old enough, little old lady, I'm old enough to remember when everyone thought the internet was going to ruin the world, yeah. right? put us out of our jobs and blah, blah, blah. So all the stuff I'm hearing about this now, it's the same sort of stuff I heard about the internet back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to say there's too much to gain. Mm -hmm. um, by not using it. So give it a crack is my advice. Donna, if we take this back a step, knowing that some of our listeners don't even know what we're talking about today, maybe you can take us through what is chat GPT? Oh, okay. Um, it's a gener what's called generative AI or generative artificial intelligence, meaning it generates stuff for you. And it generates, uh, in this case, mostly written content, but it's now able to do uh, pictures and stuff like that. So basically, you you say, you know, I need a funny joke or I'm writing a blog about this or here is my background. Can you generate 10 blog ideas for for something or newsletter ideas and it will help you. Mm. Um, the best way to think about it that I think is I want you to imagine that you've got at your fingertips a librarian mm -hmm. that has read every published word from in the history of time. Mm-hmm. Like from right back when words when stuff was published, so uh, books, articles, websites, it, it's trawled. It's they call it being trained. It's being trained on every written word bit of data ever mm -hmm. created, and this librarian remembers it all. So when you say how about this, it remembers. And I'm not going to get into the technicalities of how yeah. it pulls the data together. The only thing I'd say is sometimes it does something called hallucinating, which is the technical term for getting it completely wrong and just making shit up. So it really does a good job of that. Yeah, it does oh, a really good job of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then for those business owners that didn't even know it existed, and I think you have to be pretty far removed, I think, not to know that at least it exists on the surface level. What sort of benefits are there or what sort of things can we even do with something like ChatGPT for a business owner? Yeah, so it's the stuff that was kind of mentioned earlier. So I use it for ideation. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sitting at my 
sitting at my desk and, and I've got to do a proposal or I've got to do a quote or I've got to write an email or I've got to do a blog post or a LinkedIn or social media post. And I'm just like, oh, I don't even know where to start. And I get my experience, I don't know whether this is true for others, but my experience is the more stuck I get, the more blank I get. Mm-hmm. And the more blank I get, I just go around in circles going on blank, on blank, on blank, on blank. And so this is, so I go straight to chat GPT and say, I've got to do a blog post about blah, or I've got to do some kind of written content, whatever that is. Um, give me 10 ideas to get me started. And I always say, give me 10 ideas. Yeah. Because I just think this is this is the real value of this because I might get a combo and I've done that heaps of times where I've got the 10 ideas and I take a little bit out of idea number two and a little bit of out of idea number seven and away I go. Mm. Yep. Mm. Um, so anytime I'm doing written content, I think the kinds of jobs you have to do where that you don't do very often. So I think job descriptions, job ads, um, they're off, you know, you don't, hopefully you don't have to do them very often. And then when you do, you're like, oh, here I go again. I hate doing this sort of stuff. Um, you know, doing um, uh, pro- uh, uh, policies, procedures. So um, I had to do a, um, oh, what do you call it, a tender. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I had to do a tender. And it got to the bit where it says, you know, write about your anti-slavery policy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, well, no, I don't have slaves. So I well, <laughs> you can't just write, I don't have any. Um, that's my <laughs> policy. I'm not intending to get any. <laughs> don't even buy anything, I think, that's been made by slaves, as far as I know. Um, and then I thought, no, they're going to need, because it's a government tender, they need something way more posh and special. So I literally went to Chat GPT or Charlie, as I sometimes call it, and said, can you please write me three paragraphs about an anti-slave policy for this kind of tender, for this kind of work, in this kind of context? And boom. And can I tell you, that was a straight copy and paste. I didn't even have to edit that sucker at all. No. So it's those kind of things where you're like, I'm a bit stuck. Um, yeah. I did have someone say to me the other day, and I don't know how I feel about this one. Uh, they're in a big corporate. They're doing um, performance reviews. Mm. And they're just a bit stuck on how to phrase what they want to say. And so mm. they went and got Charlie to help them with that. So mm. wow. anytime you're stuck. I've yeah. seen some great results for some of our clients using ChatGPT to help formulate a response to a client. Oh yeah, you know, when you get those, you got a grumpy enough. client. Yes, mm. yeah. Uh, so yeah. It helps keep them professional when they probably want to dip into the below the line stuff and have a go back. Um, I've seen some really great results that they've. You obviously have to tweak, and I think this is the most important point you've made so far, Donna. It's very rare that this can be copy and paste. It does need your own blend, uh, blend of personality. It needs some of your technical knowledge that ChatGPT can't necessarily generate in. 2.4 seconds like it does for every joke that I ask for. It It's going to take a little bit more work. It's not completely replacing what we currently do. It is. It works particularly well as a as a as a prompt or an idea generator. Lots of our tradie wives use it for their weekly meal plans and then oh, they get yeah. a shopping list. Haven't even started on that yet. And guess what? If they like that, they're going to love this. So th- there's now an, an app now on your phone. You can take a photo of mm-hmm. the contents of your fridge and your pantry and then say, what meals could I do with this? Whoa. And, whoa, right? That's a game changer. Right. Like yeah. an utter game changer. Um, I was saying the, the other day um, we had a power outage and we had to get the um, clock on our stove going again. And like that's something you never do. I don't know how to do that. And so we took a photo of, it, photo of it and I just said, how do you get the clock going on this? And it gave me the instructions. Now I could have Googled that and then trawled mm. until I found the right one or I could have gone to YouTube and maybe found a video. But in that moment, take the photo and it gave us step-by-step instructions. So wow. you, you can even annotate a photo. So you can you know, take a photo of something a bit, I don't know, mechanical, like a bike or something and say this part and circle the part on the bike, that you, on the photo, and say this part's missing. Where can I get another one? Hmm. Um, you know, it's it's fascinating now what it can what it can do now that it's got photograph capabilities. It's changing so quickly, and I'm seeing it um, creep into the everyday use, particularly for trade business owners. If I think back to our our audience, um, things like ServiceMate now have functionality whereby you can 
run something like an AI tool over your short response to a client or your email template or something that you're putting together and it'll tidy it up and expand on it and make it sound more professional for you. There are a lot of really handy uses for those areas that we might not necessarily be super skilled in. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. We are still in the very, very early stages of what this is capable of or going to be capable of. Um, I think it's quite endless. There, there is, look, there's literally a website now called there's an AI for that. Wow. Um, and it has mo- most of them that I've got. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of different apps in there. Most of them are little versions of chat GPT for our context. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what you just described is for the context of tradies doing quotes and needing to get that really professional schmick language happening it's specifically for that Mm. but there's all sorts now for like they've now made specific ones that are still using chat gpt as the engine behind it Mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of like they've done the prompts for you for travel or cooking or gardening or whatever uh whatever your jam is that's amazing Mm. what shouldn't we use it for donna I wouldn't put any personal information up there. I wouldn't be telling it anything that I wouldn't be happy to see on the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald or The Age or whatever your newspaper of choice is. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure how accurate it would be. In like, So, for example, if I, 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 I put PDFs of my books up there because I can then say to it, here's my book. That, that was a bit of a plug there, by the way. Here's my book. <laughs> um, I can um, put, put a PDF of my book up and then I can say to it, Using the content in this book, create 52 blog po- different blog posts that are two or three paragraphs long. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, someone said to me, aren't you worried that now it's got your, your chat GPT's got your thing, anyone can just get your content for free? And I'm like, gee, if anyone manages to craft a prompt yeah. that results in word for word, this book, being able to be reproduced on their screen, they can have it, mm. Mm. right? Because mm. what it does is it's, it like turns your content into confetti and then the search engine, the, sorry, and the in, engine that it used then recreates the confetti based on what you've asked. Mm-hmm. So whilst I said it's a bit like a library, it's like imagine all those books are shredded and confetti and it just takes all the bits yeah. of it. So, But I still would be cautious because I don't know what the criminals are up to. Criminals are always up to some way of scamming us. So Nothing financial, nothing personal, no passwords, not, you know, the usual yep. cyber care that you take with yourself, I'd apply the same things for ChatGPT. Donna, why don't you think ChatGPT and AI in general is going to be like the internet or social media or the Y2K bug and actually ruin the world? I think it's the future of the world. As you say, it, first of all, it's been around for ages. So anytime any of your listeners have gone or any of, any of you have gone to Amazon, and there's something that says something like, hey, you like books by Donna McGeorge, you might also like books by, and it mm-hmm. lets us, that's AI and machine learning happening right there. So that's been happening for a long time. Um, it's, um, or as you say, already being integrated into apps. So it's in the Microsoft apps now. If you do it, most websites you go to now have an AI option. So it's uh, now being absolutely integrated. I think um, you know, I often say there's several reasons why it's really easy to use. It's the take up of it's been extraordinary. The world's it's all, it, it's out. The genie's out of the bottle now. We I don't think we could ever put it back. But I think the biggest one is my 80 year old dad. He's on it, and he loves wow. it. He's a musician, and he's always on there looking for music or whatever. He's use, he's finding AI apps all the time that yeah. support him and his music. Mm. So if my 80 year old pop can do it. Yep. Um, then that's why I think it's it's here to stay. It's it's going to be as pervasive as our phones. I, imagine a world now without um, smartphones, mm. Mm. right? I can't. And so it's that's it. It's it. It's out. Mm. 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 Um, Donna, if you had a thousand trade business owners in a room, mm. what's one piece of advice you'd like to leave them with about Chat GPT? Have a crack. Just just literally put put aside some time. Maybe one night you can either do it on your phone, download the app to your phone or sit on your laptop or computer or whatever you want to do. And think about, um, I think if I was trying to be super practical, I'd say think about a problem you've got in your business right now and imagine you've got a business advisor sitting right next to you. So you could tell it to say, you literally can tell it to what identity you want. You are an advisor to 
I don't want to put you two out of jobs. You are an advisor to small business, tradey kind of operations. Here's a problem that I have. Give me three or four suggestions on how I could overcome that and just just see what it says. Um, you know, back to our original conversation around I couldn't find a joke. Um, if you just walked up to a human, like if you'd just come to me, uh, mm. Nick, and said, hey, Donna, give us a joke about AI, I couldn't have done that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't have just bang, come up with a joke. And so lower your expectations because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not mm -hmm. it, it's not the be all and end all, but just have a crack uh, with something. Thanks for advice. I think I think uh, I made that same mistake uh, because of the hype around it. I incorrectly thought that this thing was just going to be able to almost read my mind and you know answer every email in my inbox tomorrow, uh, fix the website up, get me a thousand customers in the next five minutes. And because of that, it was going to ruin the world because machines were going to take over and and next minute I'm Keanu Reeves dodging bullets in the matrix. Uh, <laughs> if only my back wouldn't handle that these days. I don't but, know. You uh, did a pretty good job at, at conference last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was the three wines that helped me be that flexible. Um, <laughs> and I and I think that's one of the big mistakes that people make with it, and then they get disgruntled with it as they go, "Oh, yeah. well, it didn't it didn't do this thing." It's like, well, just like you said, Donna, I'm terrible. I can't remember jokes when people are like, oh, what's a funny joke was that you've heard? I'm like, um, I don't know. I've heard 73,000 of them, but I can't remember a single one right now because I didn't write them down. And I think once we learn how to use the technology, we can get better results and not, and not be hasty and go, oh, I had a go at it and it was crap, so I'm not going to try it anymore. Right. I think that's the – I mean, how many times have people given up on stuff? Yeah. You know, like you know, you're trying something new. It's the first time you're doing it. Why, you know, why would you give up after the first go? There's so much to be gained. What I'll do is I'll send you through and you can put it in the show notes. It's just a sheet that's got a whole bunch of different prompts for both home and work and different kinds of things you can do. And your listeners can download that. And at the very least, they can go around, play around with these prompts and see mm. just something to do with it so they can see the kind of mm. results that they can get. Um, if, if there are paid versions of it, you don't need that. Just stick with the free one. So that's another bit of advice I'd say to your thousand people in a room, just mm -hmm. stick with the free one. You don't need to go fancy on that. Um, but yeah, you know, I, with Google, we didn't give up on Google the first time. We just changed the parameters of our yeah. search. Mm -hmm. So why would we do the same here? Yeah, why wouldn't that's we right. Pardon, do the same here. Mm. That's right. Love it. Well, Donna, uh, I'm excited to see the updated version of the book. Did you get AI to rewrite the book for you? Not completely. See, I think a lot of people imagine that I just sit here and farm my nails while GPT <laughs> is writing my book. Funny, funny quick story though. Um, I was doing something at one point. I was asking it to generate 10 different versions of something that I was after. And it was taking quite a while to, you know, just, it's pretty quick, but it was taking a while. And I literally had a hangnail. So I was filing my nail at one point and my husband came in, he goes, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Proof. Proof, evidence. Donna, if people want to grab a copy of the book or find out more about you and your nail filing prowess, where should they go to do that? Uh, easiest is just donnamcgeorge.com. That's where you'll find about add out all things me, my books, and everything else. Look, like, if you get stuck, you can just go and ask Chat GPT. I'm pretty sure it'll direct. Where do I find Donna McGeorge? Like Donna McGeorge likes to file her nails. And <laughs> uh, now I wish I hadn't said that. Um, I'm actually going to go do that when we finish this. I'm going to see. Tell me, tell me be what you know about Donna McGeorge and see what yeah. it says. Oh, that'd be a scary exercise for some of us. A bit like googling yourself. Need to go Definitely. Clean up the internet. Wasn't that a thing back in the day? Yeah, it still is. Yeah. I had a bumper sticker for years on my car. Sometimes when I'm alone, I like to Google myself. There you go. Sometimes oh, you need right. to just to check what, what people are seeing about you. <laughs> so just so I'm going to start writing the jokes for our podcast, Nick. I'm just super funny. Oh, okay. Sure thing. And this is where I announce my retirement. Donna, uh, thanks for reappearing on the podcast. Sounds like you're a magician. You reappeared. Um, 
Thanks for reappearing on the podcast. I'm excited to chat to you again about Chat GPT. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. Uh, and see what some of the updates have been. And listeners, definitely go and check out Donna's website, grab her book or books. Um, she has written a lot and uh, has some fantastic actionable um, tips on just how to, I don't know, do life better, I guess. So thanks, Thanks for Donna. having me. It was awesome. Absolute thanks, pleasure. Donna.